In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own Power BI helper tool from scratch and register it as an external tool in Power BI. Here I have a, a report opened uh, in Power BI and you'll see that in, in my external tools I have just two options, DAX Studio and Tabular Editor. What I want to be able to do is build a, a helper tool from scratch and um, be able to click on the helper tool from here and have it work for me. So the first thing I want to do is create a folder that we're going to use for the project. So we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it ET1 for external tool 1. And this is an empty folder which I'm going to open with Visual Studio Code. The first step is to create a .NET project. Uh, so I start the terminal window and type in dot net new console to say I want a new console app and assuming I have the .NET SDK installed which I have details in my blog um, this will create a file called program.cs the next thing I need to do is install two analysis services client libraries um, so if I open a browser and paste in the following link I can see what I need to copy into my terminal window. So I'm just going to um, make sure I'm on the .NET client library interface, click on here, jump back to my terminal window and paste that. I didn't understand that. Then the next client library I need looks very similar but it's different is the AMOMD equivalent. Uh, so I'm going to copy on there Go back to Visual Studio Code and paste that in. And I'm not seeing any errors here, which is good. Now I can open my program.cs file. Now opening it for the first time in C Sharp, we'll probably get a little dialog window down here saying, hey, I've detected that you're creating a C Sharp app. Do you want some helper um, files? And yes, I definitely want those. Cool. Lastly, I'm just going to copy and paste uh, the code from the asset folder that I share in my blog over all of this code. I'm going to select all and just replace all. Simple as that. There's quite a lot of code, but it's relatively straightforward to, to walk through. Now one more step before we can debug this is we need to edit the .vs code uh, launch.json file. So I'm going to open that here. And the property we want to change is this console property. So I'm just going to highlight this, remove the existing property, type quote, which will give me the IntelliSense um, options available and I'll, I'll just click on external terminal. This means that everything we do will be opening in a, in a separate terminal window, which is what we want. We, we can um, save and close this file now. Now we're ready to debug. Um, I have a copy of Power BI Desktop open on my machine and I also have a local install of analysis services. So when I go uh, run start debugging, pops up my window. Now here I can start typing values either 0 or 1 depending to open an existing detected local instance of analysis services or I can type in uh, the address for a, um, uh, an external uh, environment such as Azure AES or Power BI. But let's just open the Power BI desktop file and see what happens. Cool. And what's happening here is we've got the option to uh, number 4 list the tables in the model. We can uh, display that to screen and we can see here that there are five tables in the model sales product geography manufacture and date if I'm interested in the storage modes for those tables is it direct query import or dual I can just press one and I can see that these are all import um, I can run a DAX query so I can uh, type in five and remember we have a table called say sales and I can start typing evaluate top in 100 from sales. And not only does that display the data to screen, but it also, if it detects Excel locally on your machine, it will open Excel um, with the output of that report. And you can probably run some fairly long queries like this. You can see how this could be quite helpful. You do need to have Excel open on your machine. So we'll just close that down. We don't need that. Um, we can have a look at some of the, um, uh, the Timsel. So uh, let's get the Timsel for a particular table. So if I click on 11, 
we'll list our tables again and if I'm interested in understanding what the temp cell is for the geography table I can press 2 and we'll open that in notepad and we can see all the interesting properties and annotations and all sorts that exist on the table in this model this can be very helpful or if you want the Timsel for the entire database we can just click 10 and um, bang that will actually display a much lo a larger file you can get this now by scripting this out in a number of different ways in other tools but sometimes this is just quicker now if we go back to run query it's remembered the last query that we won, wrote, wrote. So we, we could type in evaluate hello world and there we go it's actually evaluated that and um, created that in Excel. And if we go back to run queries it's remembered those there um, and in fact what's happening is I, I create a file called queries.dat and service.dat that you can open and edit and change and in fact if we don't want to have this um, edit uh, this this in here anymore we can just type in del and it will open the file in notepad for us just to clear that out it's only good for one line at the moment but um, you know you can extend this invalid oh, okay it's actually tried to run that query so now what we want to do is register this as an external tool now by debugging what has happened is it's created a copy of the executable in the bin folder debug net core app and we can see that it's created a file called et1.exe here now we can register this file as a json document over in our external tool folder folder which happens to be c program files x86 common files microsoft shared microsoft Power BI Desktop and external tools and we can see the um, the folders uh, the files there for the other tools um, now what I'm going to do is paste in what I have created and we'll open it with um, Visual Studio Code to have a look at the JSON so let's just open with code and here we go now the last um, item which is icon data it's just uh, you know the, the graphic detail you need for the icon uh, and I've chosen um, a, a photo which I converted um, but importantly here this is the location including double slashes for escaping to the helper tool now if you do decide to move this somewhere else just update this and importantly we pass the server name so we don't need to touch this this is working now fine it doesn't appear automatically in the external tools what we need to do is close down Power BI Desktop reopen Power BI Desktop to any file that you like and once this completes we should hopefully have uh, an icon in the external tools button which will work so here we go external tools there we go this has appeared now if I click on this this is opening up automatically it doesn't ask me for servers anymore it just assumes that we're, we want to be connected to this but if we do want to connect off to a different um, Power BI instance we can do that so we can list the tables uh, as Timsel sometimes you want them as Timsel for various tasks um, or we can run a query and remember we deleted that query um, but if we run that so here we go so hopefully that that is useful um, please feel free to add comments to the blog site or this um, article um, the the application itself can easily be extended I'll just actually quick to the, jump really quick to the code what you're probably mostly interested in is a um, uh, a function called main so if we go here and go to the outline I'll just drag this up if we go to the main function oh, so there's a little bit of code around setting the background color of the console I prefer uh, white text on dark blue font very 80s old school there's a little bit of code here that uh, detects if a the parameter has been passed through as an argument so if, it, if, if something has been passed it knows that it's Power BI opening this and we'll just simply open that otherwise it'll go and look for the server um, and then we uh, spit out to the console the options to um, that you allow uh, that you can choose from and this is just in an infinite loop um, that will exit if you if you type zero and then depending on what you choose uh, we have a user input equals console.readline 
what we do is we check what did the end, what did the user input did they enter a number four or, or a 10 or 11 and if they um, entered a four then what we do is we run the get tables um, function if they entered a five we run the execute dax function so let's have a quick look at the get tables function we're going to right click here and go to definition and we can see um, there's just a little bit of code that sort of walks us through um, you know again it asks if you want to enter a one to display the screen two for open as timsel if we choose a one it will just do a for each for every table in our model just simply write the details of the table out and it's and and that's all so hope you like that um, very easy to extend you know my version that i use myself has a lot more code in here i've only left the the bits in that i think might be useful and there's a there's a, a variety of techniques here that um, open excel open notepad allow you to save um, previous uh, values allow you to run queries um, so hopefully uh, there, there's yeah there's enough there for you to to run with so um that's all for this video. Cheers.